Darwinism and the evolutionary model is now becoming like the old story of the emperor's new clothes. People fear uh, to publicly question it, but in private they do. And many of them have gone forward, gone ahead and, and stepped out and put their names on um, lists of people who publicly declare that the Darwinian model does not account for what we see in nature today. If there is no, this is question five, if there is no objective standard of right or wrong, which was furnished by the Creator, how can anything be wrong? However, those of us who are sane believe in civilization, where you are part of a society. Part of your interaction with that society is you are accountable for your actions. As such, if you decide to buy some crystal meth and get a massage from a gay prostitute on your way to preach at your megachurch how you think homosexuality is an abomination to God, then people will see you as a bigoted hypocrite. Similarly, you are accountable for your actions if you think that molesting children who have been charged to your care is an appropriate course of action. We live in a civilization where you are accountable for your actions, and saying you believe in Zeus, Buddha, Allah, God, Thor, or even evolution does not relieve you of that accountability. If man is the result, if man is the result of mere chance, uh, a combination of ad happened, uh, then why is there any value in life whatsoever? Look at yourself in the mirror. For billions of years, those particles which are currently looking back at you have circulated in the universe. But for a brief moment they have coalesced in you. Rejoice in the impressive instant until they dissipate whence they came. Delight that you are a spark of life in the universe. Life is so much more vibrant and vivid without Bronze Age paranoid superstitions that cloud and contract the mind with some empty and undesirable promise that sparks can burn forever. Our time is finite. This gives our lives meaning. This gives our lives purpose. This gives our lives urgency. Live life today. Savor it. On what objective truth do you base your morality, if any? What can you point to that says why murdering babies is any less desirable a way to increase food supply than harvesting fruit from trees? Don't try diverting this argument by asking what makes my religion the right one. That's a side debate. We'll get to that later. Question six which is the logically defensible position that matter eternally existed or else it came into existence all by itself for no reason and then 
it arranged itself into extraordinarily complex living systems, including not only mechanisms, but huge amounts of information that's needed for life to function. This being against everything that we've ever observed in science, where things moved towards disorder left on their own, as opposed to moving towards more order. Or the other position that an eternal self-existing being, definition of God, infinite intelligence, infinite power, uh, created life and the information systems necessary for life to exist all at once. This is only a problem if you have a preconceived belief that God does not exist. Seven. Natural selection requires that something be alive and reproducing for it to op for, for natural selection to operate. It cannot be alive and reproducing without a huge amount of DNA operating the life functions inside the cell. So what came first? The code in the DNA or the organism that depends on it for life? Number eight, if scientists almost totally accept that a signal from outer space containing information that could be interpreted as a string of prime numbers would be proof of extraterrestrial intelligence, would, why would they not accept that the information coding in the nucleus of the simplest cells, DNA, which is equivalent to the information in a full set of Encyclopedia Britannica, was the result of intelligence? Number nine, what if God is real, as described in the Bible, and you have to stand before him and give an account for your life? Do you have a list of reasons already for why you never... What if God is real, as described in the Bible, and you have to stand before him and give an account for your life? Do you have a list of reasons already for why you never accepted it? Under close scrutiny will those reasons betray the fact that you don't want to believe, and will stick with anything that sounds good rather than look too closely. Number 10, if I answered all your objections to your satisfaction, would you submit your life to Jesus or recognize God as your creator? If you say no, you must acknowledge that your objections are just a smokescreen. The real problem is that you don't want to submit or be accountable to rules given by creator God.